Ready? Welcome back to Mother Daughter Land. Here we talk about everything related to being a human and how best to get through life happily. My mom's name is Ying, and she's the founder of Eastover Estate and Eco Village, a retreat center in Western Massachusetts. And my name is Hannah, and I'm an artist, yoga teacher, and astrologer. So what are we talking about today? Hi, how are you? Well, recently, I've been so fascinated, you know, by um, the Chinese textbook called the uh, Yellow Emperor's Internal Medicine. And uh, uh, yeah, and... The interesting thing is that that was a text that actually not really specifically written by anyone. It was basically a recording of dialogue, you know, between at that time, one of the emperor of uh, China. At that time, there were like a five different emperors, you know, each is governing a different region. And the one that in the midland of China uh, was uh, Xuan Yuan, you know, emperor. And so it was a dialogue of him and uh, his teacher, uh, Ji Bo. Yeah. And what kind of like, this is a Chinese medicine text, right? It's called the Huangdi Neijing. Actually, uh, it's not really Chinese medicine. It is actually Zhong, Zhong, you know, China is called Zhongguo like a middle country, like a middle is really means is like, you know, that philosophically and also, you know, they just take a view of the middle way, you know? Okay. And yeah, so uh, the medicine, which actually is not Chinese medicine, you know, it is actually called the middle way medicine, you know? Okay, so and in the Huangdi Neijing, Mm -hmm. What are they, what do they mostly talk about in the Huangdi Neijing? In the Huangdi Neijing, like I said, that actually was, you know, it's a recording of a dialogue, right? Between the emperor and his teacher. And so basically is that, you know, is uh, the interesting thing was that at that time, so this is before the Qing dynasty, at that time, it looks like is that, like all of these people, they were kind of like a Taoist practitioners. You know, they lived uh, most, you know, like, uh, you know, um, uh, on the land, you know, depend on the land and also, you know, depend on of the weather and the season and the crops and all of that for survival, you know. So everything, everything seems like is that it's around of that. And um People really, really, it's like a ritual, you know, to have practices, you know. Now, nowadays, we call practices. At that time, it was their natural life, you know, right? And But the interesting thing was that, you know, uh, when the emperor, so this is when we say the emperor, so this is before Qing, but actually it already has a history about uh, 500 years, you know. And so... Uh, the Xuan Yuan Huan Di, you know, the Xuan Yuan uh, 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 Emperor, he um, observed, you know, that uh, uh, why is that, you know, like there was a so correlation between of like, for example, the 60 year cycle, you know, in the cosmos, and also how the Chinese calendar counting of the years by cycle of 60 year, you know, and then the 12, you know, and then, you know, of our organs, the nine organs, you know, seems like corresponded to the nine, you know, like uh, uh, mountain regions, you know, and all of that. So he asked his teacher, you know, that um, with, you know, nowadays, it seems like it. so five year, 500 year history, right? So he's questioning and saying that, well, you know, it seems like is that now people's longevity does not look as good as like before. Before they had a much simpler life, you know. But he noticed. So he asked the the his teacher Jibo why, and Jibo said, "Well, this is the secret of God." You know, they actually use the word of Shangdi. Shangdi in Chinese, uh, uh. Character means uh, 
God. He said, this is the secret of the God. And this is, you know, knowledge that passed down by through transmission and through one by one teaching, you know? Okay, so, so what, let's pull it to nowadays, like uh -huh. in modern life, what can uh -huh. we take from the Huangdi Neijing and use in our modern day living? Okay, so the Huangdi Neijing as recorded at that time, throughout of centuries, of course, is that the text, you know, have changed, uh, uh, how to say, not that the texts have changed, but, you know, that I would say is that probably until about the time, right before the Qing Dynasty, okay, about 200 years ago, the original text, which originally that they found, you know, on, on the back shell of the turtle, you know, like they mm -hmm. carved on the turtles, you know, right? And then a little bit later time, you know, they were carved on like the bamboo strips, you know, and they found these strips, you know, like um, at the tomb sites, you know. But uh, at that time, it's not only just the internal medicine, you know, but also of the Yijing, you know, the the change, the book of change, and also the Shenlong Bai Cao, the, you know, uh, the divine farmer's uh, herbal book, you know. So these three, basically, they are the essence of even today's Chinese medicine. Like Chinese medicine did not really, let's say, advanced, you know, actually from that's like 4,700 years ago. It did not, you know, kind of like um, evolution. Like let's say, it didn't really evolve, you know. Like say, in today's concept of advance, it really was practiced until about probably two hundred years ago as a divine textbook, like the Bible, you know. And the and the and the text really is is not not just. A, about the medicine and actually really is, you know, it's about of, of life of, you know, our body changes and also our, you know, spiritual, you know, health and all of that. It's also interrelated to the cosmos, you know? And so from the earliest, you know, conversation between the emperor and the, his, his teacher, and it really is a text, you know, which is that, it seems like it's not something that is written by somebody, you know, from their mind, you know, but rather is transmitted or is that, you know, actually pre-history, pre-Chinese history, probably there was such, you know, uh, such knowledge already, but it was passed down through transmission or through, you know, like, one-on-one -on -one teaching that's the most fascinating part you know mm -hmm. yeah so uh-huh <laughs> yeah what a question you have <laughs> I don't know I'm just trying to bring like like what can we take from it like oh what, okay what do you yeah. want to talk about related oh yeah to so actually you know uh how to say is that so even you know i hear things like this you know i uh, probably multiple multiple times in my life right but i never actually really go and read the text you know i just yeah. knew there's such a thing exist you know and 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 i in my head you know i thought that Oh, okay, you know, this is the book, you know, people study, you know, uh, Chinese medicine, you know, they study this. And then I was always in my head. So that's why, and I felt like I'm not a person, you know, going to study of, you know, medicine. So I never, never actually read the text myself until, you know, about uh, like last week, you know. And, uh, but the interesting thing was that from the previous uh, a few sessions, you know, we were talking about, again and again, you know, of uh, the connection of like, what do we go through in life, you know, whether it's uh, doesn't matter what kind of things that's happening, whether it's accidental, or whether it's whatever, you know, and we found that, you know, they are so closely related to the health of our body, you know, we, we talked about that uh, a few times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So when I finally this time hearing of that, the text actually is not really because I had a misunderstanding or at least that's how modern Chinese medicine in college, that's how that they tell their students that, oh, this book was written, you know, doing of this time and blah, blah, blah. You know, of course, I wasn't interested to go and, and read a you know, a uh, 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 medicine textbook, you know, written by some human, you know, right? Mm -hmm. But this time, when I heard that, it's not really say per se written by human or scholars, I got interested, you know? So I felt that maybe it's time to investigate, you know, <laughs> how this transformation is done. And, uh, uh, and uh, or is that, you know, there's some kind of a glimpse of, you know, the civilization before our, you know, human civilization, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and also it's so amazing is that when I opened the textbook, you know, the first chapter, when I open it up and I go and investigate, I immediately understood that whatever my body that gone through this last three years, like say that, you know, at the, toward the fall of 2019, up to this point, my body in this little passage about, I don't know, not even, you know, 200 words, I literally read that everything that happened from the time that I got a COVID at the end of 2019, to now and how my body was affected physically or symptoms of, you know, pain and illness. It just so accurately described that. And that really shocked me. <laughs> and, also, and also the text mentioned that, you know, it's interrelated with uh, the energy of the Mars and also the energy of the Venus. Okay. The change, yeah. So Mars in Western astrology is very much the, it's like our energy fuel. Like we are like, Mars is like to the point, we're rushing forward, we're putting in our energy, we're putting in hard work. Yeah. So you're saying that it has a lot to do with Mars and Venus? And the Venus, yeah. Okay. And, and and the interesting thing is that, but for each person, right? It, it it's not like you know. Let's say is that in this time period, how the Mars energy is, right? That affects everyone in the same way. So even within our family, right? You know, the Mars energy change. You know, it's the same, right? But when it uh, when it corresponded to me and then corresponded to your brother, it's exactly opposite. So for example, in my case, I think I belong to of the fire type of constitution, you know? So in my case, you know, it almost kind of as if predicted that, you know, in 2019, I'm going to get the COVID. And also it also mentioned is that there's going to be like, uh, other people, you know, going to have a pandemic, you know, right? And then after that, and because of the COVID, you know, my lung was injured. And because of the lung was injured, you know, I would encounter pain between of my shoulder blade, you know, and also is that, you know, there's others, others like, for example, fungus attack, you know, mm -hmm. and also uh, like a uh, gallbladder you know, pain that, you know, this is so mind boggling to me, you know, it was so accurate, you're so saying. accurate. And the symptoms of the, of the pain and association is like a, so accurate. Mm -hmm. And then, so I was just totally out of curiosity. And I, then I go and look at, you know, like corresponding to like your, your, your brother's, you know, uh, constitution and I noticed is that you remember that, you know, when we went to traveling the year before, like two, you know, like a quiz, uh, Christmas ahead, we went to California at that time, you know, 
when he was there, I felt like so much tightness of the chest, you know, and I couldn't even breathe. And then after he left, I realized, and then my symptom all gone after he left. And then I realized this whole week I was struggling with breathing and, you know, just close up, not able to breathe. It was him. And then this year when we went to Florida, I felt like his chest, you know, was much more open compared to that time. But still there's tightness, you know. And then in his case, his constitution is different. He's like the horse, you know, I'm the ox and he, I, I'm the fire. You know, he is definitely more of a toward probably, uh, I think it's, um, um, it's earth, more earth. And so his constitution it's the same, uh, it's affected by the Mars, but his is more showing off is that the close up of the lung. And uh, uh, so it's kind of like, you know, uh, suppression, suppression, you know, and not able to like, you know, open up and, and, and just, you know, kind of like liberating, you know, it was just so amazing. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, so what do you see of like, you know, from your experience with the Western astrology and uh, how is the Mars energy, like I say, in general affecting of people's? Uh... It's, it's so different in Western yeah. astrology that it doesn't typically, you don't feel very much of it unless there's a transit going on with you specifically. Uh -huh. And it's, it's just not really presented as you're talking about it, I guess. Mm -hmm. They're very, very different, Chinese astrology and Western astrology. So yeah, yeah. I mean, from past, you know, I knew is that, you know, the time that when we are born, you know, like me, you know, I born on a very special day, which is the moon festival day. You know, like that's the August 15th. That's exactly when the full moon you know, right? So actually my yin energy is very strong because of that, you know? And, uh, but anyhow is that, you know, it definitely, it's so fascinating. And and I know from the past, you know, I, I listened to other people's lectures. I knew that our body, you know, the 12, you know, like a chi channels and all of that is totally corresponded to the lineup of the stars. You know, it's a projection from that. It's like as if, you know, we are this projected, you know, like polygons, you know, the polygons are connected by, you know, this energetic, you know, chi acupoints, you know? Mm -hmm. And so now when I... This is like, you know, the, the, the interesting also is that, you know, it's like I said, it's the first time, the first day I opened the book and this is what I saw. And that really just astonished me, you know? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then, uh, so, well, partially, actually, I think a part of the reason also is that is uh, before this, I was definitely listening to, you know, uh, people's classes about the Neijing. And that's what got my interest because also, you know, I have been wanted to like really, really, you know, study a lot more of the Taoist practices because just, you know, they are like really the expert, you know. Yeah. Can you share with us on that? The Taoist What practices. do you want me to say about I don't know. Oh, like, um... it seems like the yoga practice that you have done many years, it's, there's some connection with that, right? Yeah. It divides I would the say body that... into like what, nine houses? Yeah. Yeah. I would say that, yeah, um, a lot of the practice that I did was related to Taoist philosophy mm -hmm. and like this idea that when we can balance all the different sides of ourselves we can live in a place of equilibrium i guess yeah equilibrium right like mm -hmm. the middle way you know right yeah. centered centered grounded connected with the earth and the heaven you know right yeah uh -huh. yeah 
So how do they achieve that, you know, in yoga? Well, it's kind of like uh, we used a metaphor often of like the body as a house. And so when we can sort of go into each of the different rooms of the house being whatever body parts, sides of the body, Mm -hmm. uh, as long as we're sort of like equally cleaning out and addressing everything, we can bring Mm -hmm. the body into balance, which then can bring our minds into balance. Mm, yeah so okay yeah so uh, i'm just you know looking at the book you know yeah the the middle way so they basically is like you know they have like for example like the heart is the commander you know Mm. right yeah and 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 then you know like your intestine intestine and things you know it's more related to like your brain and 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 your bladder you know is uh, and liver and and all of that each part right they are at you know like the body at its different size of the body and the location and the heart is in the middle which is the commander right and 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 like also like for example the spleen and all of that and that how is that affecting of like you know your ability to make decisions right yeah and this is a common theme in a lot of spiritual practices now like i mean okay we can take a different kind of yoga system we can take the chakra system Mm -hmm. right and that also is related to different energetic parts of our body that relate to how we function Mm -hmm. so but in the end it's all the same thing like we're taking different sets of organs or organs and Mm -hmm. we're like corresponding them to how we're functioning or Mm -hmm. like, you know, our psyche, how things are going in our life, how we address things, how we deal with things. Everything can be, this is like a very Taoist philosophy thing, I guess, is that everything can show you the entire world right so any yeah. part of our body can show us our whole body or the entire uh-huh. world like we can read our whole body from our hand or our feet uh-huh. or even just you know one little part of us like uh-huh. one cell can tell us everything yeah about yeah our functioning they call that uh uh it has the uh hologram you know information Like from Mm -hmm. one little part of you, you really have all of the information of like the whole rest of the universe. That's literally, you know, how the Taoists that they uh, they call that. And also, of course, is that, for example, like a Xuan Yuan, you know, emperor, he was also such a good emperor and really governed the country so well. And a part uh, and one of the thing that, you know, that. Uh, historically that it was always said is that he actually was he really is that most of the time he devoted to personal cultivation and then so from that they really really say is that well when you cultivate well and you really know your body inside out and you know how to manage your body and from that you can manage your work, you can manage your family, you can manage the country, you can run the country very well, just from like, you know, learn uh, balancing and harmonizing of how that you manage your body and your health, your connection with the cosmos, your connection with everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a good, it's a good concept is an interesting philosophy it's a good way of looking at things because uh-uh. it's much easier to say like I can heal a lot of myself if I just focus like I can focus on one little part of myself uh-huh. I can focus on just you know healing flexibility in my wrist mm-hmm. and that can heal flexibility in my neck that can heal everything right like mm-hmm. even just changing one thing has the mm-hmm. chance of changing everything you mm-hmm. know so it is an interesting way of looking at things it's also very related to the concept of like uh we are very interconnected with the universe and like Yes, you can 
learn how to manage your body and then you can manage the country. But mm -hmm. it's like you, as you learn how to manage your body and as mm -hmm. you learn your body and you're changing, like things are changing within your body, mm -hmm. everything simultaneously is also changing around you. Uh, yeah, that's the energetic part, right? Yeah. Energetically, you know, really is that there's no separation. And even you try to separate, you cannot, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like today, you know, at some point, uh, I was feeling, you know, kind of hey, suddenly a little bit different. And I, you know, and I immediately became aware and I say, oh, what I was doing, you know, I, you know, began to think about different things, you know, and, and right there, you know, uh, I, I noticed is there was an energetic shift, you know, and that energetic shift really is that, you know, it's, it's the whole, the whole that, we really cannot separate from, you know, we are so like connected, you know, we are, we are that whole, you know, that's the thing, right? And right. I, and that is, I believe is that, you know, today there's so much problems related to separation, whether it's like within the family, whether it's, you know, that uh, within the country and then in the world that there was so much, like conflict going on, and I really feel that's mainly because of a separation, really. Right? I mean, I guess so. I don't know. Yeah. I But I do think that most people, what they really benefit from healing is themselves. Like, there's sometimes too much of a focus on mm -hmm. other people rather than understanding yourself first yes yes yeah well i think energetically speaking really is that when you actually able to heal yourself at the same time actually you are healing of everything that's outside this outside really it doesn't really have any kind of material existence i mean it's more of a mental existence you know and, and it's really just a phenomena and appearances, you know, out of, <laughs> out of our, ourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. But, uh, well, 2024, um, just, uh, on next week, I believe that, uh, it's going to be actually this weekend, this weekend, energetic a huge shift is going to happen because on sunday no on friday friday is going to be the chinese new year you know and then saturday it's going to be changing to the dragon year you know yeah mm -hmm. and the dragon year is uh, the first year of the 60 year cycle you know so this is going to be a huge energetic change. And uh, uh, the coming year, uh, of course, is that, you know, the Taoists, you know, they really study so well of the interrelationship between of the cosmos change and how is that a change affecting of the energy that's on the earth, you know, related to like crops, you know, disease, and flood and you know and and even the war you know and all of that and also you know the coming year it's a big election year around the world you know so uh there's going to be huge changes and uh a lot of the um people that who study this they have really predicted you know there's going to be a lot of chaos but also is that chaos is also of hope of change too at the same time right you know? yeah yeah so actually lastly i want to ask you so from the western astrology do you see of big change big shift of like the famine power do you see that the famine, famine power the 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 yeah female uh, energy oh feminine power yeah feminine power yeah energy i mean i haven't looked specifically oh you haven't looked at it is this no. something that you can quickly take a look or something like that huh. no no i mean i would need to really go and 
Yeah, work, maybe you I should... don't usually use Western astrology as predictive astrology. It's no. not that reliable for uh -huh. certain aspects of predicting things. I see. Well, maybe it's interesting to take a look of that. But anyhow, is that yeah? So uh, a lot of the uh, Taoist, uh, you know, practitioners that they have predicted that it's going to be a big change year of the feminine power and politically, you know, and also is uh, 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 like within the family, you know, and within like uh, companies and you know social order and also you know like. Uh, um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's very interesting. It's very, you know, yeah. Sounds fascinating, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it seems uh, fascinating. And the year of you and your brother both are going to be very, very good years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, well, that concludes our episode today. And if you'd like to connect with us more, you can find us on YouTube or book a personal reading with me. Thanks for listening.